Hello, my name is Elena Tabanko. I'm a medical coordinator from Patient Support Center of Bukimed. And now we will have a little interview with uh, Professor Sviram, Head of Department of Neurosurgery in Ikhilov uh, Medical Center. Uh, so first question, uh, could you uh, describe the work of your department and what are the most uh, frequent disease among the foreign patients? Okay, we're the most active uh, neurosurgical department in the country, probably one of the largest in the world. Uh, we do about, about 3,000 procedures every year. And uh, we have uh, specialties for any kind of uh, neurosurgical problem. So it ranges from uh, benign and malignant brain tumors to pituitary tumors, uh, pediatric neurosurgery, spine, functional neurosurgery, peripheral neurosurgery, and epilepsy surgery. Uh, we also have a very strong interest in uh, endoscopic procedures, endoscopic operations, uh, where we do uh, transpenoidal procedures for skull based tumors, pituitary tumors, things like that. Uh, we have uh, a very advanced uh, unit that uh, deals with uh, brain tumors, especially when the tumors are in functional, eloquent regions where you need to do. Uh, awake craniotomy and mapping and monitoring of uh, various functions, including, of course, uh, motor function, language functions, and cognitive functions. And uh, preservation of these functions is, uh, is, one, is one of the most advanced uh, places uh, to do these kind of operations. Mm -hmm. So basically, any neurosurgical problem, we've got uh, our own specialist for this type of disease. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell, uh, please, about uh, endoscopic neurosurgery, um, something interesting about this uh, method of surgery? Uh, that uh, method is used for uh, skull-based tumors, and uh, especially for pituitary tumors, uh, where we use also advanced uh, three-dimensional endoscopy, one of the few places in the world uh, that helps us in uh, performing these operations safest and more effective way. Mm -hmm. And what about treatment of malignant uh, brain tumors? Uh, what uh, treatment strategy you mostly use for this? Well, for malignant tumors, uh, we have our own special section that uh, is, uh, which comprises of uh, specialists in uh, neuro-oncology, neuropathology, neuroradiology, uh, radiation oncologists, and of course our neurosurgical oncology team. Uh, where we do very aggressive uh, operations to maximal resection of tumors because the extent of resection, the amount of tumor that you can take out is associated with survival of the patients. And this has been shown over the past decade uh, very clearly. So we aim at uh, doing maximal resection, uh, including in very eloquent functional areas of the brain. And uh, I guess that we do over 80% of all the brain tumors in the country. And uh, as well as many, many patients who come from abroad. Mm -hmm. And uh, about uh, innovative technique, which you use, could you tell about stereotaxic surgery? In what cases uh, you use this? We do stereotactic biopsies in a very small percentage of patients that uh, have brain tumors because most of them we can operate and, and remove. That's opposed to many other centers who do not have the expertise in performing these kind of operations. So they rely on just obtaining a biopsy uh, and then treating the patients with uh, oncological treatments. Uh, but uh, stereotaxy is also a very advanced state of the art. We're using frameless stereotaxy biopsies or we use uh, advanced navigation uh, systems uh, for very precise localization of the site of the tumor that we need to biopsy. And uh, it's, it's very standard. I mean, there's nothing cutting edge about this thing, it's, it's being used worldwide now for mm -hmm. quite some time. Okay, uh, do you have any statistic how many surgeries you have performed and what is the treatment uh, efficiency in your clinic? In, in, for what disease? Uh, at all. No, there's no <laughs> such thing. I mean, uh, we, like I told you, we do about 3,000 operations a mm -hmm. year and uh, they separate into cranial cases, brain operations, uh, spine cases. Uh, cranial, cranial cases. Cranial cases are, are probably about uh, 2,000 a year, something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, there's no question of uh, efficiency. Efficiency. Or, uh, no, because it depends on, on it depends. the pathology and the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But uh, the results of diverse uh, uh, disorders is probably uh, at the top rank in the world. 
in most entities. Mm -hmm. And for example, for malignant brain tumors. Well, it depends what type of malignant brain tumors. Uh, glioblastoma. Glioblastoma. Uh, we uh, use uh, advanced uh, intraoperative technology, including the use of fluorescence, you know, 5 AMA, mm -hmm. uh, that allows you to visualize um, the tumor cells because they fluoresce in a pinkish way and allows us to do maximum resection, what we call close resection. So uh, probably 95% of the cases we do complete resection. And of course patients will need to get radiation therapy and chemotherapy because it, this is an infiltrated tumor. You've got tumor cells surrounding the area. As far as uh, survival goes, uh, we probably have one of the best averages in the world. Uh, I think it stands now around uh, between uh, 20 and 21 months. Uh, which is very good, but that's also because we use, uh, and many of the, of the patients, we put them on experimental therapies or other additional therapies uh, such as implantation of uh, gliadel wafers or the use of uh, TT fields, you know, the optium system that was uh, approved recently worldwide using alternating electrical waves mm -hmm. for treatment of brain tumors. Uh, for other tumor types, malignant tumor types, such as lower grade tumors, uh, we do a lot of uh, insular glioma, you know, deep-seated tumors that are very difficult to recite, but very important to remove surgically because, uh, again, it's associated uh, with significant survival advantage for the patients. So in these cases, we do them with electrophysiological monitoring uh, for motor function, uh, neuropsychologists to do cognitive function testing during the operation, especially on the dominant side of the brain where you have uh, eloquent areas for language, uh, memory, musicality, abstract thinking, decision-making processes, all of these are being monitored. So this is very cutting-edge technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about uh, the common mistakes in diagnostic and treatment in informed patients? Because you know that a lot of uh, cases um, are not um, exact, uh, a lot of patients have a not uh, exact um, di di diagnosis when they come to your clinic. I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. For example, um, about 30% of our patients uh, when go to uh, Israel, uh, to Ikelov clinic, um, had another di diagnosis, not... Uh, different from di different, di different, different from a diagnosis, for example, in Ukraine or in other country. Well, yeah, I, I can't mention, you know, we, we Diagnosis like for the pathology or, or diagnosis of what needs to be done or the management of patients? Uh, no, uh, pathology. Pathology? It, yeah. Well, that's not our experience, but I'm not a pathologist. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, if we're not sure about the diagnosis, we uh, ask for revision or other uh, opinions. But uh, we usually examine the pathological specimens with a pathologist in our laboratory. And uh, I'm not aware of any difference in, in diagnostics between Ishilov and other centers, but again, I'm not a pathologist, so I can okay. really comment on that. Okay. And the last one question, please. Tell about uh, most interesting or most difficult case in your practice. Most, well, unfortunately, because we are a referral center, which means that many of the very difficult cases are referred to us. So um, many of our cases are very difficult, those cases that could not be operated elsewhere or where uh, physicians or surgeons in other places did not feel comfortable in performing, they refer them to us. So uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, problematic cases from uh, any kind of uh, neurosurgical specialties. Mm -hmm. And maybe the most interesting case in your practice? Uh, interesting is a subjective thing. <laughs> so, uh, For you? Well, for me, everything is interesting. Okay. That's why I chose this profession. Okay, thank you very much. For You're your welcome. Question. Thank you.